In today's video, I will be sharing with you how to survive your first few months to a year when you travel abroad. Hello guys, welcome back to this channel. It is 2024 and we want to say thank you all for supporting us over the past one year since we launched our YouTube channel. We thank you all for the amazing support that you have offered us. We have come this way because of your support and your commitment to us. And we do not take that for granted. We do not take that for granted. So in today's video, I will be sharing with you how to survive your first year in the U.S. So if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, I would encourage you to do so. If you haven't yet shared it with your family, friends, and loved ones, please do so as well. Hit the notification bell so you do not miss any of our videos. And yes, like I said, we already have so much to share with you this year and we do not want you to miss out. So in today's video, I will be sharing with you how to survive your first few months because I know it can be very, very challenging as an immigrant when you first travel, especially if it's your first time traveling. That is, if you do not have any traveling experience and you move and this is where like you are moving to settle and you don't know when, like, you're either going to go back home or not. You haven't yet decided and all that. But whichever way, you know that you will be spending the, at least several of your years to come in this foreign land. And it can be very, very challenging. I have been through it. I know so many people have been through it. And it's not easy. It looks easy at some point. And you may think, oh, yeah, abroad is like great. You just have to travel and you would make it. But trust me, it is not that easy. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of toil to be able to make it in a foreign land. So stay with me as I share with you how you can survive those first few months to a year when you first move. So when you first move, you know that most times you end up in a place where you already have people from your home country, okay? So for me as a Ghanaian, when I first traveled, I lived with my cousin and her family. And so, yes, that is my immediate family at that point, and they are Ghanaians as well. So that is my first family here in the U.S., and through them, you get to meet other people. That is people they already know as friends, people that they get to know along the line. But because you live with them, whatever they do is what you would do, okay? So most times when you travel, you are not first traveling and going to a random place. You are definitely going to someone, and most times that person or that family is someone who is also from your home country. And I would always say the, 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 the people you first encounter here in the U.S. makes a big difference um, in terms of how your life would go, okay? In terms of how your life would go. If you do not meet the right people in the beginning, trust me, it's going to be difficult for you. If you do not meet the right people in the beginning, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. You, you will definitely get out of it, but trust me, in the beginning, it's going to be tough. So um, when you first move and you live with family and friends from your home country, you want to be able to connect with them, right? You want to be able to live amicably with them. You want to be able to, um, be able to um, talk to them. You want to be able to um, learn from them. Um, and that is one thing that most people miss is that when they first come in, Number one, either they don't trust the people they are living with and so they are not able to either ask questions or learn from them or the people you are living with either don't want to share the right information with you because they went through a very difficult period and so they wanted to also have a taste of it. And and yeah, I mean, we are humans and things happen, you know. No, no, no Nobody um, lives life so easy. We all have experiences that... We either share with people or you can learn from, right? So the people that you live with could either like be the kind that 
do not want to easily give information to you so that you can move up quickly compared to what they went through uh, or in, in 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 the other case that you are not asking the right questions so that they can help mm. you so number one tip to surviving your first few months here in the US is be willing to learn from other people. Be willing to learn from other people. Because, you know, there are always people that have come ahead of you and have gone through the process. They have lived here so many years and they have experiences to share. They have advice to give. But what we realize is that sometimes when people move here in the beginning, they just want to do things their own way. They, they just want to find their own path, you know. And so it's difficult for for people to be advised. It's difficult for people to receive advice because they feel like you are either telling them what to do and um, stuff like that, you know. But most times people are sharing their experiences so that you do not go through what they went through. But, you know, they always say experience is the best teacher so sometimes it doesn't matter how much somebody wants to advise you it's like you just have to go through it yourself but unfortunately you realize that it may not always be the best way to do it experience may not always be the best way to do it so if you find that you are um the kind that wants to do things your own way trust me when you come here you want to you want to take a step back you want to take a step back and learn from others just just listen, especially when people just want to offer you the information for free, let me put it. It's not necessarily like they just want to give it to you for free, but they know what they've gone through or they know what they went through and they're like, I just want to share this with you so that you do not go through it. So even if you don't want to take that advice, I'll just say, just listen. And then sometime just think over it, just ponder over it and see if you can take one or two from what they shared with you. And that can save you a lot. That can save you a lot of mistakes. That can save you a lot of regrets down the line. That can save you so much headache that, trust me, you do not foresee it coming unless you go through it. But trust me, whatever somebody has gone through and is sharing that experience with you, you do not have to repeat that same mistake to learn from it. Just learn from their experience. Just learn from their experience. Number two way to survive, number two point to survive your first few months is connecting with community, connecting with your community. Um, so what, what do I mean by that? When you first travel, most times you travel and live with somebody from your home country, okay? So for me, being a Ghanaian, when I first moved here, I lived with my cousin and her family. So th that is my immediate community okay but through them you get to meet other people from your home country so you meet their friends you meet their friends friends you meet people randomly in the store in the uh, um in in the park and places like that so you want to still find people from your community back home and why do i say you should find them you should find them because it's not easy to adjust when you first get here. It's not easy to just make new friends. It's not easy to just get used to the culture. So getting people from your community who you can easily associate with, you can easily sit down and crack jokes and laugh and talk and, okay, today come to my home. I'm cooking lunch. Let's have dinner today. Just so you can keep some sanity, you know, because it can be really depressing abroad. Most people do not have friends. Most people just go to work, come home, eat, sleep. Then the routine starts again the next day. They do not have a life. That is how most people live here because people don't have friends. It's all about work, pay bills, and that's it. So when you find your community, you realize that you are still keeping the culture. On, you, know? you are still keeping the things that you used to do back home. You can easily call this friend and talk and laugh. You can easily call this friend and say, hey, um, I'm going to have this party. I want you to be here. Or this person can call you and say, hey, I want you to watch my kid for me for an hour today. Or you call the, the other person and say, hey, I need your help today with putting up my curtain. I got a new apartment. I got a bed that I need extra hands. So you need to find your community and, and connect with them. 
some people will tell you, oh, don't, when, when, you, when you travel, stay away from your Nigerians, stay away from your Ghanaians, stay away from the Kenyans, stay away from, the, like, you know, because they've been here and they, they've seen some things that you haven't seen yet. But I would say it's not a great advice that you come in and not mingle with people from your community, okay? Because um, that way you're going to struggle in the beginning because if you're trying to run away from your own people, trust me, you, you will not easily mingle with the people who already live here on this land, that is the Americans or the, the whites, okay? Because their lifestyle is also different and your lifestyle is different. It takes time for you to understand them and it takes time for them to understand you. So making friends become difficult in the beginning, okay? So connecting with your own people is much easier and you will learn a ton from these people. That is if they are, if they are the right people, okay? If they're the people who are not selfish, if they're the people who don't mind sharing things with you, you will, you would have a good foot to begin on, okay? So that is the number two point for you to be able to survive your first few months. The third point is to connect with your community of faith community of faith so that is if you are a christian you want to you you want to plug yourself into a church if you are muslim you want to plug yourself into the mosque if you are whatever you are whatever you are you want to plug yourself into that community um and yeah some people will tell you um it's best to come in and go to a white man's church okay and i would say yes from our own experiences, yeah, it's it's nice to um, uh, go to a, a, a white people's church, but trust me, not you may not get all that you need from there. You may not get all that you need from there. So I would encourage you, if you first come and you can find a church where it's more diverse, even if it's not like a church where most of the people are people from your home country, find a church where there's diversity, where you can see people that look like you, okay? Because it becomes easy for you to fit in when you walk into a church and, oh, yeah, I see that black man sitting over there. I see that lady that looks like me over there, okay? I'm not saying don't go to an all-white people's church, but just imagine walking to a church and not seeing anybody like you. It can be a little bit tough to fit in, okay? So once you see somebody that looks like you, you are like, oh, okay, I can, I can go talk to this person. Even if that person is not from your home country, just the color of that person's skin kind of makes you feel comfortable approaching them and talking to them. So plug yourself into your faith community, um, be active in, in church, in the mosque or wherever. And, and that is a way to keep going because there will be activities here and there that you would go. There would be times where they are hosting this at this person's house, even though that person is not your friend, but yeah, um, everybody's invited. So you get to go and you get to meet new people, um, and all that. So make sure you find a faith-based community that you can plug yourself into, okay? Number four, the fourth point I would share is for you to take it easy and slow but steady. Easy, slow, but steady. You know, I've met some people who just want to come into the country and it's like they're rushing. They just want to make it. They just want to make it. But it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. Some people work so hard and stress themselves out that they cannot even take time to even breathe. They cannot take time to relax. They cannot take time to go on a vacation. They cannot take time to enjoy life. It's, it's all rush. It's all like running around constantly because you have so much that you are trying to do within a short period of time. Because, yeah, I know we all have family and friends back home that we need to support. We all have other things that we, we want to achieve in life. So it feels like once you arrive, oh, yes, this is the land of opportunities. I just want to make it. So I'm just going to hit the ground running. And, yeah, it can be very, very draining. It can be very draining. And some people don't realize, but they end up being um, depressed, lonely, tired, and without life. It's like there's no life in them. And I've been through it before. And that's why I'm sharing this. I've been through it before. Um, and and I want to say that if I knew better at that time, I, would, I wouldn't have done what some of the things I did, okay? 
So when you come in, just take it slow, take it easy. Learn from people. Take time for yourself. Don't stress yourself. And you would make it. You would make it because you are here to live the rest of your life. Even if you want to go back home later in your adult life or in your old age, you would be able to go. But in the beginning, you need to set a good foundation for yourself. You need to be able to know how to take good care of your own self so you can live a healthy and long life but with the grace of God. So you can enjoy all that you want to enjoy in the old age. So number four point is to take it easy on yourself. Don't rush your your life here abroad. I mean, here in America or anywhere else that you find yourself in. Take it easy on yourself. The fifth point I would share is for you to, above all the points I have shared with you, is to trust God, is to trust God, is to trust God. It's, it's easy to come in a foreign land like an, like America and just want to take things into your own hands because you know the opportunities are there. You do not have to really struggle. Like if you want to do this today, you can do it. If you want to buy this today, you can buy it. Um, and so we tend to forget about God, that he is the author and finisher of our faith. He knows our end from our beginning. And most times some of us, we got into the country by the grace of God. We got into the country by the grace of God. So you don't want to leave God out of the equation, okay? As much as I'm saying that you should plug into your community of faith, you also have to put everything in God's hands because it's easy to go into a community of faith but feel lonely, okay? You can be there, but it's, it's, it's not easy to get connected to everything because life is happening. You have so many things going on, and sometimes you don't even... Um, go to church, you are not able to do all the activities that happens in the church. So you on your own have to be able to find a way to connect with God, trust everything in his hands, and believe that he will do what he has called you to become. So the fifth point is above everything else that I have shared in the first four points is to put everything in the hands of God. If you enjoyed this video, I would encourage you to share it with your friends, family, and loved ones. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you do not miss any of our videos. Until we come your way again next time, stay blessed and be safe. Thank you. So guys... It's not easy doing videos when you have kids in the house, you know. I'm sharing with you a little bit of what we go through on a daily basis when we try to do a video. Stay tuned and watch this portion. What's your name? 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 <laughs> That's Can we sing? Yes. Let's sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how we build a star. A star that is so bright, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how I wonder what you are. So I think baby shark. 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 Baby the view from the back. No. <laughs> quiet. <laughs> no, I don't want to keep quiet. Why? I want to sing. No. Why? No, I want to sing baby shark. No. I want to sing feels on the back. No, I need to practice.